Hi everyone, it's Ocean here from Inhouse Publishing and another author interview. Um, jumping in front of a camera isn't always easy. Peter thinks he's going into surgery, but he's not. Uh, all we're doing is talking about the fantastic book and the fantastic journey that is When Shepherds Dream. I remember the day we uh, first talked about this and certain parts of the cover have come true months and months later. Um, and it's very pleasing to see you pick these books up last week and stand in the car park with a big smile on your face. I, I enjoyed watching that. But um, now it's your guys' turn to learn more about Peter and more about this book. Peter, tell me what is When Shepherds Dream? What is the story about? When Shepherds Dream was really born out of uh, a very difficult period in my own life, a tragedy in my own life. And by way of uh, uh, working through that, I decided to diarise my thoughts and feelings each day. And uh, I became quite surprised at what came out on the page before me. Um, and I thought, oh, I can make a, a, a book out of this. At the same time, uh, Spirit spoke to me in the form of Dove. The whole concept of Dove and Eagle really forms a big part of the story. What do they represent? Dove and Eagle are masculine, feminine aspects of deity. Okay, interesting. The story is based in India. Why is it based in India? What's your connection with the country over there? I have travelled to India a couple of times and uh, I was really fascinated by the richness of the culture there. I went over there on, a, on the spiritual journey and uh, it wasn't always easy but uh, that was eclipsed really by the uh, by the wonderful things I found there amongst the the people, as I say, their culture. I found uh, one thing that really hit me was their spiritual, their spirituality is bound up with their culture and their daily life, whereas in the West here it's it's more something that is added into our life rather than you know, if we've got time for it, yeah. rather than part of our life, you know. Uh, that, that was one thing that really fascinated me. I want to talk a bit about the spirituality that you've mentioned. So, mm. this is a book about living a spiritual life guided by ethical and human-centred um, morals. So, has writing this book um, been been a spiritual experience for you? I mean, you've mentioned that you, you were, you've been on spiritual journeys to, to India. Has, has actually this process been spiritual? Well, it has been. Yes, it has been for harking back to what we were just talking about before in that sense. Uh, Was it also, more cathartic? I beg your pardon? Is it more cathartic? Because you mentioned you were, this came out of some... Yeah, well, yes and no. I mean, cathartic in the sense that uh, a couple of the characters in there in particular, there's Sandu Kamara and he is the protagonist and, and his best friend Shanti. Um, I can see a lot of myself in them, but you see I wasn't, um, I was not conscious of this until I almost finished the book and that was, <laughs> it really surprised me to see that, but it stands to reason really, I mean, um, you write about what you know about I think, you know, and that, that's what I was drawing on my subconscious. Uh, it was also a spiritual experience in that, um, there's a lot of tragedy in the book as well, and uh, one of the main characters has an untimely death, and for me that connected with the death of my own wife, and so I drew on my own emotion for a lot of the scenes in the book really, but most particularly on that one. So. That is sort of, um, I wouldn't say cathartic for me that one because it's something I've sort of worked through. So when I when I visit those places now, like the painful parts of the book, but there's also ecstatic parts of the book. So they're all sort of meaningful to me because both that and that, but even though they're opposing one and the other, 
the joy and the sorrow. I mean, it's all part of my experience. And so, uh, but the painful parts are something to me now, when I visit those parts, when I read my book over and over, which I've done so many times, <laughs> um, that undoes me every time. Right. Not because it's painful, but because it's led me to where I am now. Okay. And so it's something precious to me. Yeah. So that is why it undoes me, as I call it. Well, that makes sense. I mean, it is a journey, I think. You know, any, any sort of writing or creativity exposes ourselves to certain mm. parts of what we've gone through. I think you nailed it on the head when you say, when you're writing certain characters, you're actually drawing on your own emotion, your own connection with yourself, mm. and portraying that into the characters on the page. And, you know, our experiences that we go through, that gives us credibility to write about certain scenes or, or locations, doesn't it? Yes, I think so. Mm. Uh, and I think what you sort of, um, what feels precious to you is, um, that's where your emotion is and, and that is what you can portray. Absolutely. What's been the feedback from the people that have read it so far? Uh, one reader said that it was easy reading and had the effect of taking the heart higher. And I was pleased with that because that was, that's the effect I've been aiming for. Uh, my assessor said it is typical of the sort of book that is made into a movie. And That's promising. Yes, well I was very pleased with that of course. Mm. And Kai Edwards in it in-house publishing said it was a very interesting story and she enjoyed reading it and picked up some lovely new spiritual concepts along the way. I'm going to ask one more question, which is about the future for When Shepherds Dream and the future for you. What's your vision for the book? What is next for Peter? What's the vision for the book? What's next for Peter? My vision for the book, well, obviously it is for it to be a success. I'd like it to be made into a movie. Uh, my vision is also, my vision which is tied up with the book is also, I think, it's a very satisfying feeling to know that you can touch the hearts of a lot of people and I think through this book I'll be able to do that. A lot of people leave a legacy through their children, it's probably the most important legacy a lot of people leave behind. Uh, I have no children but I think uh, through my writing and uh, When Shepherd's Dream being my first published book, well I think I'll be able to achieve that. Knowing the journey that you've been through since the first time you sat in my office to see you today, it's great. It's greatly satisfying to see this in public. Well, it's greatly satisfying to me. It's greatly satisfying to both of us. Yes, Cheers, man. Thank you so much. All good. If you guys want to get a copy of When Shepherds Dream, this is Peter's website across the bottom of the screen. Go and check it out. It's also available on the in-house bookstore and on Amazon. We'll see you all soon. Cheers.